Jensen's draft. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to the Team Draft Super League. I'm Kenji Igashira, joined with Kai Buda. We are watching William Huey Jensen, currently drafted. And the uh, Skype draft conversation. <laughs> Gonna have to ask Huey to increase the card size. There. It looks like they're playing on a single monitor, so. Yeah, well, I mean, they're going to play on the laptops. They don't have real computers down there in Japan. Sure. I mean, <laughs> maybe they went to an internet cafe, but I assume they're playing on laptops, so. Uh, actually, what do you think of the rare? Imminent Doom? Uh, I think it's actually pretty bad. I know I actually had a lot of um, interesting experiences with, with, with it today. Um, it's a little bit harder to build around because the best one drops are generally going to be in the first two packs, but you don't want to necessarily take them unless you're going a little bit greedier, picking up those Traveler's Amulets and whatnots. Yeah, you do need like at least two or three one drops to make the card decent. If right. you have that, I think it's probably pretty decent. But there's there's plenty of good cards. I think the counter spell is actually pretty good. The spider is obviously good, and the three one Ocatra's Avenger is probably one of the better commons. So yeah, yeah, he just takes the spider. Right, it's always like a bit annoying know. because he's, you're taking a gold card first pick. But I mean, no, so another weird. interesting thing here: he's passing another Ocatra's Avenger. I agree with you. I think that's one of the best white commons. It's just so aggressive. It comes down on turn two, uh, but. This pack is still very loaded. Remember, it looks like Yelger's passing to Huey here, who's passing to Mike, so... Yeah. I mean, I think the best card in the pack is probably the 2-1 first striker, honestly. Maybe the River Hoppo, or however that is pronounced. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the 3-3 zombie that makes attacking zombies indestructible. It's been pretty mediocre for, you, for me. Yeah, I'm not And a that's fan in black-white, like, like green, I don't think. That's a good card. Yeah, like, okay. basically, we're looking at removal spell against uh, the flying card drawing engine here, I think. Yeah, and Torment of Venom, which is what Huey has highlighted here, does already synergize nicely with the Obelisk Spider. Yeah. I, I would probably take the, the Flyer, I think. Like, especially in Team Draw, when the decks are a bit worse, it feels like the, the game stall out a lot, because there's just no one killing you super fast or anything. And that thing is so good if you can s slow the game down. Yeah, a little bit of punishment <laughs> here for Huey, who's getting past another Burning Fist Minotaur. I think, again, that is just one of the best premium two drops in the format. 2-1 first strike for two, and it just, it's so hard to block early game because of the, the discard ability to pump it up. And he actually highlighted the f five damage removal spell, the common sorcery that right. exiles the target. Puncturing I blow. think I like the Minotaur better, actually, than Puncturing Blow. Oh, he did actually take the, the once we fly. Right? Yet he, he had the removal highlighted until the very end, right? Mm -hmm. I think he just it's just messing with us. <laughs> um, he could also be doing the highlight for us to to see what he thinks might be taken afterwards. Yeah, I mean the guy behind him should be in red now. I mean that was just the best card. Yeah, that's just the pacifism. I think enchantment in general got a bit better in the previous set. I didn't like these uh, pacifism effects that much because sure. people could just unload their minus one minus one counters on these creatures. But there's a lot less of these effects now, so I think they're a bit better. I assume he thought about the cycling land too because getting the deserts is pretty important for a lot of decks. Right. Manalis. Okay, I'm not a fan of that card, but the pack is pretty weak. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think Huey's going to just go for the, the powerful four four or more color uh, deck here, taking well, Manalith pretty highly. I don't think he's looking at that red card. Like, red is just an aggressive card. A lot of the cards just don't go very well in control dish decks. And double red is a little bit heavy. That's true. Hopefully he can pick up, like, an Abrade or something. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. I don't know about you. No, 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 that's a great card, yeah. Like, there's less powerful Exert creatures around now, and actually blocking is a thing again. I think blocking an Amon Cat was not very strong, because all the aggressive creatures had Exert, and it was really tough to block. But now you can actually block again, and the wall is pretty decent. Yeah. The main problem is that Michael Jacobs said that on a stream, it's pretty annoying that you have to target your opponent. They should have worded it like any opponent, so you just can click at the end of turn. <laughs> Having to click twice is... 
Uh, well, it, it, would, it would have to read each opponent, and then that would make, like, Two-Headed Giant a little bit more awkward. Or, I guess it would just be better in Two-Headed Giant, but... He likes in Yana's defeat a lot more than I do, I think. I probably would take maybe the Impulse or the Mill thing. Maybe even the Desert. I hate passing deserts. Yeah, only problem for, he for Huey here is that the white one is the only color he doesn't have t or he hasn't taken so far. Yeah, but again, this is not an eight man draft. You don't want to pass your your oh, sure. opponent's late desert, I think. But he did take the impulse, which I think is perfectly fine. Now, uh, Might just I mean, say I like rewinder. yeah, like I like the counter spell. But if you black hexproof is really nice. Putting the black cartouche on the hexproof feature is very dumb. Yeah, so, yeah. similar to uh, Scaled Behemoth in, in the last pack. I mean, this is obviously way worse than Scaled Behemoth, but it's still good enough. Right. 6-6, six, six, lifelink, hexproof. It's pretty tough to beat. <laughs> <laughs> but then the problem is that, I mean, Amoncat, there's less commons in the draft than Amoncat has commons overall. So you can't really plan. Like, a certain common might not even be in the draft. It's like almost 50-50 if it's in the draft at all. Double wow. on color desert. Two deserts still in this pack. Do you take the foil or the regular? Uh, I would take the regular. <laughs> <laughs> Assume that's the decision here. I mean, maybe the 3-3. Three, three. I, I would take the desert. He likes the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, and but another, another late desert. Wow. Actually, I'm pretty surprised that Spellweaver Eternals is still in that pack. That, that blue common has really impressed me. Yeah. Although it's probably not for you, it's like, like you, you just want to slow down the game. True. Which, uh, that's also why I didn't like the 3-3 all that much, I mean. It looks like he's pulling the Obelisk Spider and the Puncturing Blow to the side. Maybe just going with a blue-green deck here. Yeah, Randy pointed out he has to imagine that Manolith is better in a team draft where you're more likely to play a few yeah, but fringe cards. It's so slow. I really don't like it. Another issue is that this format, you can get glutted on three drops very easily in Manolith. Well, yeah. Being a three is, is, is super awkward for sure. Angel? I mean, that's... I assume the red and white card are in the sideboard right now. I mean, I guess he probably leaves them in his deck because if he opens a bomb right now, he can still move, but... I can't imagine that he's planning to play them. A nice wheel there, striped Riverwinder for his 11th pick. I mean, it is a 7 mana 5-5. Five five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it cycles, so... You really need some sort of combo with that. Manolith, get it down on turn 6. Turn 6, yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll just take the Granitic Titan there over the Seer. I mean, Seer Wow, what? why is that card still on the pack? So do you rate countervailing wins pretty highly? I mean, I think it's just a fine card. Like, the format is a bit slower, and, like, there's bombs around. And you, it cycles if it doesn't do anything. Yep. Oh, well, more mill cards here. He opens a Fraying Sanity this time. Uh, some other notable cards, I think, the Vizier... Of the Anointed, a good one with any Embalm or Internalized creature, which he doesn't actually have any yet. There's the Ipnu Rivulet for a desert, Blue Desert, uh, Desert of the Indomitable, Traveler's Amulet. Anything stand out to you that he would instantly just pick here? It's a pretty unexciting pack, right? Like, the 2 4 is pretty good, I think, if you have something to go with it, but he just doesn't have anything right now. Mm -hmm. oh, but again, to the counter spell, like, you don't have to do much for me to put a cycling card into my deck. Like sure. any cycling cards that potentially has a good effect on the game, I'm very easily putting in my decks. But yeah, I think it's a busy. I mean, the upside on that thing, if you get something good, then yeah, it's pretty great. Sure. And you only need one card for it to work even. But yeah, he hasn't really seen any black cards, right? Like he first picked the spider and then second pick he had the minus three, minus three. Right. But afterwards black just completely dried out. And you have to assume that um, who's passing? He's Mike's passing. passing to him now. Yeah, he was passing to Mike and pick one. Like I assume Mike has to be red. Maybe he's red black, but like I assume he picked up the red cards that Yui passed him and pick one. Like even the pack where Yui 
uh, picked the red removal spell, he still passed it to one first striker. Which is... Like, that thing has been really impressive to me. I mean, That's toughest right. one is always a problem, but that thing is so hard to block. Yeah, he passed two burning burning fist minotaurs, absolutely. Ronus's last stand here as a on-color rare for Huey, and that yeah. card is a beating on turn two. Yeah, but only on turn two. And I'm not sure Yui's mana base is uh, looking to cast that turn two right now. Oh, wow. Quick highlight of the struggle to survive. And that, that's it's the, just one of the best removal spells in the set. Yeah, and you know, if Mike was red, he might have taken that for sure. So, yeah, I'm really surprised that that's there. Like, I think you take that over any red common at least. Yeah, there's a mana fix, which he needs pretty badly now. I mean, now he's got two sources of any color. So, if he gets an evolving wild, he can play just single casting cost of all colors easily. Yeah, Oasis Ritualist has really impressed me. He was passing some premium commons, I think, the Ronus' Stalwart and the, the Kenra Scrapper, but Ritualist is just so good. Yeah. Yeah, again, I mean, in the last set, in Amok had only 2-4 was almost unplayable because it just couldn't block anything, but suddenly 2-4 is actually fine. I mean, it, it just blocks. So now we're looking at the Beetle against the Hippo, I think. Yeah, and he has... One cycling land right now to get some value, but I probably like the beat a little bit better in his deck because he's gonna pick evolving wilds pretty high, I assume. Oh, he's highlighting the red desert. Wow, I would have expected that he takes one of the green dart dorks. Eh. It looks like he's kind of committing himself to playing some of these red cards now. All right, this pack has oh, a, wow. a ton of playable still. Yeah, like Inferno Jet is just a good card, I think. And then, uh, yeah. I mean, the root waller is fine. And there was another uncommon, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I didn't quite catch it. Trevor's amulet is exactly what he wants. I mean, now is he probably could play all five colors if he wants to, but it feels like he's like he's planning to play red now, right? Which does make sense because he doesn't really get like he probably expects Mike to be red still behind him, so. Going red into pack 3 is pretty nice, because he then cuts off Mike from red cards. Mm -hmm. Oh really, I would have expected to see the Traveler's Amulet now. So we see the third desert now for Huey, who has the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs, the Unquenchable Thirst, and I think that's it for Desert Synergies. Wow, yeah. a late Eternal of Harsh Truths. Still an Unsummon too, which I'm kind of a fan of, but yeah. Eternal has to be better. I'm pretty high yeah, on I mean, the bounce effects now. Yeah, the spider's already in his graveyard. Yeah, like... Yeah, he's just uh, green, blue, red. It looks like a pretty even mana base right now. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily for him, the titan does cycle, but... Yeah, I, he already has uh, three cycle lands, so you can easily play 18 lands. Alright, Supreme Will, the pick up there. Another nice... Pseudo countervailing wins, it's even better. Yeah, I'm not sure about that puncturing blow in Granitic, Granitic Titan, but I would definitely play the struggle from his seat. Yeah, I mean, the struggle is super easy. That, that always makes you like. And that gives it gives you like a random chance if your opponent has a god, but I mean, obviously, Mercy Grass is pretty unlikely, but yeah. at least you have an out. <laughs> well, the puncturing blow deals with the gods very well. That's true. But yeah, as you said, I mean, maybe he's looking at, like, splashing green, but then he's got Rona's last stand, and the Ritualists are mana fix, but it's green. I mean, he does have more blue-red cards right now. Like, the green might easily end up in his sideboard if he, like, maybe he's just splashing the 1-3 the flyer. I mean, if, if he just sees blue-red cards for the rest of the draft... Yeah. Well, that's a decent green card. Yeah, what do you think of the Devotee of Strength? Because I keep going back and forth on it. It's a 3-2 three, for 3 at very worst, but 5 mana yeah. feels like a lot to, to invest to pump. Yeah, I think it's a, it's basically a 3 mana 3-2, three, which is okay. I mean, sometimes you play the stupid Pouncing Cat, the 3-2 Flash guy. Sure. But, like, you're not excited about it, but, 
I mean, he doesn't get activated very often. It's super expensive. But then he can win games. Right. Like sometimes you just have 10 mana and you just win because you have that guy in play. So, I mean, I'm happy to play him as a filler. Like I'm not going to pick him pretty highly, I don't think. But I'm not, like I'm always happy to have one in my deck, I think. Just late game mana things are pretty nice. Little bit of a troll there, highlighting the fray fraying sanity with his Ipnu Rivulet for a second before taking the second uh, countervailing wins. Yeah, so the last few picks he got a Naven Reed Stalker, another Grenadic Titan. His Vizier of the Anointed, which he's highlighting right now, doesn't have any targets, but remember, it still does hit Embalm creatures, so he could get, you know, a Tawkrop Skirmisher in the last pack, and I, I would think we'd see the Vizier just happily being played. Yeah, I mean, it's not super exciting to uh, fetch a skirmisher, but I guess it's good enough. Oh, baby. Uh, that's the card you want in blue-red, but there's also a crocodile, which is also pretty nice, but yeah. Sultering Sun's just very, very good. Again, another double red card, though, but I think his mana base can pretty easily support it at this point. I, I think he's just moving off his green cards, honestly. Oh, Unless he takes the crocodile now, then... <laughs> We're just playing all three of them. Like I would probably take the sweltering suns and probably start to put my green on the side. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how many wrath effects or similar to wrath effects are in this format now with the addition of uh, Hour of Devastation. Yeah, like both Bontu Sing and Hour of is it Revelation? Revelation white and one? Devastation. Yeah, Revelation yeah, so is white one. But. The red one is Mystic, right? Was it a normal rare? I think so. I think it's a Mythic, right? And yeah, the white one's but, rare. Yeah, and the Bontu thing is also rare. So there's like a reasonable amount of mass removal, as you said. So, really, Vitalist? I mean, I think I'm just taking the Ember on Minotaur and I'm just blue red at this point. You don't take the Skirmisher just for that, that first Embalm creature value? I don't think so. Oh, it looks like he might be hating on a fan bearer now. Um, that seems weird to me. I mean, sure, fan bearer is a nice card, but it's not super powerful. <laughs> and I mean, I still think that Mike is red behind him, so he's going to be happy about the Minotaur either way. Like, that's always the problem, right? Like, sure, he hates now, but likely Mike is getting an excellent card for his deck. And right. in that situation, I don't like hating because it doesn't really accomplish all that much. Yeah, we had talked about in the pregame portion. If you know, if, if you're able to, to to hate draft a card, but you're still passing something else to your opponent, you know, is it is it worth it to not just take a fine playable for your deck? Yeah, like maybe he just has a better better read on the draft. But I mean, he did get the, the red green split card pretty late, so maybe he thinks that Mike isn't red. But he passed so much quality red in the first pack that I have to assume that Mike is red. Yeah, that's a pretty decent card for him. Doesn't have oh, anything to combo with, but... So Hour of Devastation is also just a normal rare. Oh yeah, so it's just all rares, nice. Yep. <laughs> yeah, lots of mass removal flying around everywhere. Alright, a Vizier of Tumbling Sands is a Bitterblade Warrior, which I wouldn't mind. Thresher ah. Lizard going down to Mike. Vizier has to be the easy pick, right? Yeah. And Seeker. Seeker looks okay in a stack, but not exciting. Wanda in this, really? Oh, I mean, it works well with the double striped river winder, and it's an easy splash if you really wanted to take it. If he takes a sand room, he thinks that he's a lot more green than, than I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, the nice thing about the worm is that it's cyclable and it's seven mana, so you don't need the double green that early. Yeah, but like, I mean, you need something to win with pretty badly. Like, he's got some cards to stall, he's got a mess removal, he got some, some one to one removal, but like, to actually win with, I mean, he does have the, the one three flyer that draws in guards, which is a solid win condition. Oh, okay. Nice pick up here. Either Hooded Brawler or Ronus's Monument. I don't think his deck wants either, right? Like, I don't think this is a deck for, for Rona's Monument. Well, I think the Monument is nice because he just has those those few top-end fatties that he can push through if he wanted to take that instead. But it looks like he's going to go with the Brawler. <laughs> These guys are 
pushing through by themselves, I think. It's not going to be needed. All right, one Granitic Titan moving over to the sideboard as well as a countervailing wins. 27. I wonder how many lands he's planning to play. Like, I would probably play 18 with three cycle lands. I like to actually be able to cycle my lands and not have to play them. Right. Yeah, I mean, I know that he has, like, a lot of mana sources. Currently, he's got 23 non land cards and then three deserts and. The white cartouche tabled. A clear sign that Sam Black is not in this draft. Um. Trial of Knowledge seems f pretty decent for his deck, actually. I mean, no Katoos, but just being able to draw some cards. Looks like he's taking that Initiate's Companion instead, maybe prioritizing just another early drop. Hmm. Do you like his deck? I mean, it seems like it's a bit all over the place. I, I do not like his deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I like the power level of some of the cards, but uh, together, no, I don't think it's... Yeah, if he had good. all dual lands, I would uh, be pretty high on his deck, but That's just seems nice unlikely. Gift. You got a, the Talkrop Skirmisher on the wheel, which is going to turn back on the Vizier of the Anointed. Yeah, but still, I mean, he has double red cards, he has double green two drop, and then the majority of his cards are blue. Just, Honestly, I could see him cutting the red cards and maybe just splashing for the struggle. Yeah, that could happen. He does have a lot of players. That's that's not a problem. Oh, I like the Forsake the World here, because he can end up splashing that if he plays against like an Overwhelming Splendor or Sandworm Seeker Convergence. Well, if the Seeker goes straight to the sideboard, I assume he's planning to play the red cards. Wow. wow. He's definitely the only blue draft at the table, yeah. right? I mean, uh, this is just... Hmm. Some nice gifts here at the end. It's a bit weird. I mean, you would think that Yelga might expect him to be blue at this point. I don't know. I guess he didn't really pass anything powerful in blue. But yeah, I think you're right. Like, you can just cut these red cards and just only play the the red green aftermath card. Mm hmm. I mean, all the other stuff... Like, sure, Sveltering Suns is great, but honestly, you, if you can't cast the turn 3, it's not that great. Right. His deck doesn't look like he's casting that turn 3. Yeah, so, so, in your opinion, how did his deck turn out? Well, the thing is, for, in, for like, 8-man draft tables, you can just say, okay, this is, like, a 7 of 10, this is a 5 of 10, blah, blah, blah. But for team draft, you can't really do that, because you need to see the other decks. Like, this deck might be terrible, and it might be pretty good, depending on how defensive the people around him drafted. Like, yeah. maybe he ended up... Like, for an 8-man draft, I would say this is, like, a 3 or 4 of 10. So, pretty unexciting. He's got some decent playable cards. He's got some good removal spells, but his mana isn't great. There's just too many holes in this deck. But, like, if the people around him just all drafted defensively and jumped around in the colors and, like, don't have great decks, then this deck might suddenly be pretty good. I mean, it just really depends. It yeah, would be nice so, to see Mike's deck, just to get a comparison. What do you think Mike has dra drafted? I don't... I Like, double passing the double Burning Fist Minotaur really makes me think he, he has to be red at the very least. Those cards yeah. are just so hard to pass, and he got them, what, third, fourth pick or something? That, that's my thinking, but Yui... I don't think Yui puts him in red, because if he put him into red, that fan bear pick just makes no sense. Like, hate the fan bear, pass Emberhorn Minotaur, I mean... Like, if I'm red-white aggressive, sure, I'm taking the fan bearer, but, like, it doesn't really matter to me, I don't think. Like, I'm happy with both. Yeah. Like, the Minotaur is by far the best non-rare four-drop you can get, I think. And maybe that was just a misstep on, on Huey's play. Um, Could, we'll have to yeah. see if Mike ends up with the double Burning Fist Minotaur slash Emberhorn Minotaur aggro red deck, we'll know. Yeah, uh, maybe Mike is just, like, black-white or something, and, and Huey just did it, I mean... It's always a chance. Yeah. So this is the he point did. in the draft where all of the players are probably calling each other or talking with each other because um, during the the deck building portion, you get to you get to talk with one another. So they're going to be like, okay, well, I passed this here, and did you see this card go third? So the players, the teammates are going to have a better idea of what everybody else is, but we're kind of left in the dark guessing. Yeah. 
I mean, the thing is, Huey did pass Mike third pick to the minus three, minus three black thing. So maybe he thinks he's in black. Like, Mike could have taken second pick to the three, one white common, and then third pick to the minus three, minus three. Sure, a catcher's that, Avenger that is, into Torment of Venom. Yeah, that's like, it really depends on Mike's first pick a lot, I think. Like, that was the same thing. I think it was when, when Shion got the insane black white zombie deck. Right. Like, the guy passing to him, I don't remember who it was, but I think the the faulty line of thinking there was, okay, I passed him these great cards, he must have taken them. But that's not true if the guy first picked a great card in another color. Like, if you first pick a bomb, and then you get past a great card in one color and a pretty good card in your color, you take the card in your color. Like, if Mike opened a blue bomb, he might be even blue. That was the thing with Peculiar's draft, where I think Ben Stark was calling the draft, and he was like, yeah, okay, he's in the correct colors. There's no way the guy in front of him can be blue. But the guy in front of him was blue-black. He just opened a blue <laughs> bomb. I mean, that's the thing. Like, all these new magic sets, I mean, by new, I mean in the last five or eight years or whatever, you have so few unplayables that it's so much more important that you play your first picks. Because your first picks, rares and uncommons, are so much better than the commons that it's super important to have those in your deck. Because if you have like a good common or a filler common, the difference is usually not all that much. But then if you have like three damage for three mana or a spell during suns, that can be a huge difference. So right. like these signals, you have to be pretty careful with that. Like <laughs> if the guy in front of you first picked a good card in, in some, even in the color you're drafting, you're probably just not being able to get him off that color. Yeah, I think that's a great so. point. The, the rare quality is, is so much higher that you can kind of afford to force it sometimes, even though well, forcing isn't not necessarily something some, uh, that people you know generally say you should do. But uh, like you said, you can replace one common for another of slightly less quality. But if you have a, a powerful blowout card, then maybe it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, if you're drafting in front of me in an 8-man and you pass me zero red cards in the whole first pack, and then I open a glory bring or whatever. I'm taking the glory bring. I don't care. Like I know that I'm not getting red cards in the third pack, but it doesn't matter. Like I'm gonna get some playables. I'm gonna get some like three twos for three or whatever. But then I have a glory bringer, which is just way better than anything else I can get. So, well, fortunately, it's... glory bringer you cannot open in the first or second pack anymore. It's only in the third pack. So, it's uh, similar stuff. Although I mean, to be fair, like the the most similar card to glory bringer is uh, the. White Angel, the four mana three three. Oh, and Angel's that thing, condemnation. That thing is several leagues below Glorybringer. Like it, when I when I read it, I was like, "Wow, this is a stupid bump." But honestly, it's not even similar. That card is so much more beatable than Glorybringer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just so many more ways to deal three damage than four anyway. That and like, you don't have to kill like Glorybringer. It kills a creature, and then you have to kill it. The angel, it takes a creature, then it takes another creature, then it takes another creature, and then if you kill it, they all come back. Like, you just have, like, five turns to kill that thing. Lawyer Bringer, you don't have five turns to kill that thing. Right. Pretty big difference. So now, we actually ended up with the full three-color build. Okay. I think we have, he ended up with one of his ogres, he has the double red removal spell, he has sweltering suns. So what is he going to do with the mana? I mean, that's going to be... He's going to play 17... Wow, I don't like this very much. <laughs> Two of the lands are cycling. One of them is the mill, three, or mill 4 land. Yeah. For, for fixing, he has Manolith and Oasis Ritualist. Uh, he does have a bunch... Of, like, all of his top-end cycles, Grindic Titan and Greater Sandworm for two colorless, Stripe Riverwinder for a single blue. What is even his desert synergy for the mill land? Is, is there anything... I think he's just running that for the the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs and the Unquenchable Thirst. Sure, that's fair enough. But his mana is going to be such a gigantic mess. Like, if you want to cast Threatering Suns, how many red sources do you need? Like, six? Yeah, and he's currently got three mountains added, so that would put him at three, four, five, six. That would put him at six. That would be exactly six, but, like, suddenly you're looking at four mountains. Look at the amount of blue and red cards, and you have four mountains in your deck. Yeah, That's... Ronus's monument off of seven forests is not ideal for sure. Ronus last time, yeah, 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 exactly. Like seven forests? How do you want to cast that thing? <laughs> hey, I don't know. I think I probably preferred what you said that just go into blue green and like screw the red cards. 
But I mean, his deck definitely is more powerful like this, but... I'm pretty surprised he actually cut the Harrier Naga, just the 3-3 three, three for 3. He took that over like a green desert too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always takes the desert. Alright, so that was a look at here, uh, William Huey Jensen's draft here. Uh, right now we're watching Goat Stew and Team Peach Garden Oath. We're going to get to look at Mike's deck building process, I, I believe, um, in just a few short minutes. But yeah, uh, you know, Chad, if you, if you have any input into what William could have done differently, we'd love to hear it. I know uh, Kai has Opening already... Opening better doesn't count. I know Kai has already expanded upon... <laughs> <laughs> what what do you think went wrong? I do agree that Fanvera pick was especially weird because I think that was the only card that he truly hate drafted, and you know he he had fine playables in his own color. I mean that just really ends up depending on what Mike is drafting. I mean maybe he just has a way better idea of that than I have. Sure, like, I would expect Mike to be red, but and if he's red, I think that pick was really bad. Well, I think I think Mike might be red white is what he was thinking because he passed the double Aketra's Avenger. Um, were the Avengers in the Burning Fist Minotaur pack? I don't think they both were. No, we... like, the first Avenger was in, uh, in Yui's first pack, I think, and then I don't think there was a Minotaur in that. Um, might have been... Yeah, sure. Okay, well, it looks like we have Mike Atron's draft, so let's take a look at that and see what he actually ended up with. Hmm. So, uh -oh. oh, that's the kitty. That's always a good first pick. <laughs> he opened an adorned pouncer. That means uh, presumably the pickup here, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him get those Aketra's Avengers soon. Yeah, like, the thing is, with that thing is, <sighs> two mana, like, there's a lot of removal that actually exiles, but right. it all trades up. Like, you always have to spend four or five mana to exile that guy, which is super annoying. Just yeah. pretty good card for me. It looks like he took the adorned pouncer, pick one, pack one. Here comes yes. out of Catcher's Avenger if he wants to take that follow-up white card we were talking about. Yeah, Indeed. he does take that. All right. Yeah, I mean, that was expected. I guess this, his effect was pretty bad outside of uh, Catcher's Avenger. And so this is the Burning Fist. Okay, so one of Catcher's Avenger is with uh, the one of the uh, Burning Fists. But he, I'm sure he's taking the Burning Fist here, right? I don't know. He might just stay oh, on color. Okay. Yeah, he's got a nice start to the draft. So he's got a Jorn Pouncer and two Aketra's Avengers. Uh, we're going to see another Burning Fist Minotaur this pack, which he probably ends up taking over. Oh, we know because mm. the Aiden Field, especially. Oh, he did take the Burning Fist, there. Yeah. yeah, if I was Mike, I actually might have taken the, the stupid 3 3 flyer. I mean, also, I guess it's a team draft. Yeah, I think in an 8 mana, take the 3 3 flyer just to be more open. But in a team draft, you just want to take the more powerful card almost all the time. So. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And currently he has four two-drops, which is a little bit unheard of at this point in the game. Hmm. Do you take the random two-drop now, or...? Probably. Do I, don't, I don't like the Angel of God Pharaoh, and I'm not yeah. huge on the five-drop unless I'm slower. Yeah, but like, that is probably just the two-mana two-two, right? The mu yes. mummy paramount. I mean. There are actually some red mummies now in Hour of Devastation, but not anywhere to the number that you would get if you were black and white. It's even more two drops. Oh, speaking of one of the uh, the red zombies, the frontline devastator there is a zombie if he wants to take that. Yeah, but oh, he even takes it. I would okay. have expected him to take another two drop, but sure, that thing is pretty good. Yeah, the flick actually, is more annoying than I actually gave it credit for early on. Yeah, I think devastator is surprisingly good. Right, more two like, drops. Yeah, he's on. <laughs> Two Avengers, a Burning Fist, an Adorn Pouncer, two Mummy ah. Paramounts, and the, the Devastator now. I'm taking the Desert there for sure, I think. I like Desert. Cycling Lens is so good. <laughs> More two drops. Okay, now you're kind of full on, on two drops. Well, Mike does not want to run into Huey's sweltering sense, I will say that much. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a good pick. Like, he needs some giant growth now. Like, he has a lot of two drops, but a lot of, a lot of them are kind of weak, like 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, and he needs to get some pass blockers, so... Yeah, and Active Heroism. looking for, like, two combo right. tricks, maybe. Yeah, Active Heroism, great with the uh, Exert creatures as well. Yep. Yep, that's another combo trick. Angel comes back, not too bad. I mean, it's certainly playable. I'm not oh, yeah. a huge fan in white-red aggro, but... Getting that, like, 11th pick. 
It's pretty nice. Definitely. And it cycles, if nothing else. Like, games you flood out, sure, you get to cast it, but... God Pharaoh's Faithful looks like pick number 12, and we're just getting to the dredges here of the last few. Renunciation, I could see making his deck. Could be, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not, not sure with that card, yeah, but it's... It's definitely not bad since it cycles. All right. And, okay, that's the pack with the Rona's Last Stand. So I think he took the Ambuscade out of that pack, right? Because we didn't see Ambuscade. The other way is pretty bad. Yeah, must have been, right? I mean, there's nothing else. I mean, he could take, like, another Frontline Devastator, but... Right. Not really. well, this, is, this is kind of the position <laughs> that you were talking about earlier, though. He has two green cards. He's good green cards he's passing. The Ambuscade and the Ronus's Last Stand. Is it better for him to just take the Devastator here? Probably, I think so, yeah. Like, the Appeal Authority is also pretty good if you're red, white, uh, white, green aggro, but that probably is... He's solidly into white, red, I guess. Looks like he did take that Ambuscade. Yeah, I think Devastator's probably a bit better, yeah. Oh, another Avenger. He has three Avengers thus far. Yeah, so but maybe... that I don't get. I'm taking the struggle here for sure. Right, I think so too. This is the I mean, pack just... that... Three mm -hmm. mana instant kill any creature. I mean, yeah. I like Terminate. And we know he gets that struggle next pick. That's also another thing, right? Like, Yui passed him the Angel 11's pick. Like, right. it's super nice to pass Yui good white cards because you know he's not going to be able to use them. Like, that's the other thing. Like, if you, were, if you were very certain that a guy in front of you is not drafting a certain color, it's super nice to take, like, a little bit verse card in another color and pass him cards in that color. Because suddenly he gets into the situation where does he want to take a card for his deck or uh, hates this color? Right. Uh, hates this card. <laughs> That's like a pretty good spot to be in. But yeah, obviously Desert Hold super nice. Yeah, arrest here. Pseudo Arrest. I don't think he's taken any lands yet, correct? Nope. Oh, so he likes the Survivor's Encampment over the, the Red Desert, the Desert of the Fervent. Uh, That's probably his son hitting his keyboard. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that seems... that's interesting to me as well, but maybe, I guess he likes the... No, I can't imagine taking the... Just because it's untapped. Wow, and he takes the Aven instead of the Inferno Jet. Okay. Okay. I would like to ask Mike how many drafts he did in this moment. <laughs> what do you think, actually, of the Red Rare? That's, that's kind of interesting. Hazard Hazard's Fury? Undying, on Fury? Uh, I, I think yeah. he has too many two drops to... I mean... I guess they're all good two drops. I I've liked the card. It's whiffed for me though. It it yeah. certainly has its it's it's very high uh, when it hits. Very high ceiling, you know. I mean, but, you really want to have that thing as your last card that you play, right? But right. like in a red white aggro deck, I, I'm a big fan of Inferno Jet. I mean, six damage is it's a lot of damage. You only have to attack for fourteen, and you have all those two drops and removal spells. I'm wow. not sure about the, okay, that... the Avens here. And he's, he's probably punching himself, you know, for taking the Aven now over the, over the Inferno Jet now that he's gotten a second one. I'm also a huge fan of that, uh, of that beast guy. Yeah, Gilded Seradon. Mm -hmm. I mean, this attacking target creature can't block is just such a huge effect. Like, right, if you're yeah. Red White Aggro with all these two drops, I mean, he doesn't have the Deserts, I guess, but like, he could have had the Deserts for it. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, if, if I want to play a 5 drop, in the red white deck, I think that's the one I prefer. I mean, yeah. So now he takes the uh, Peel Authority. Yeah. I guess the Prowl Sky isn't very good for him. Blur of Blades. Yeah, I like Blur of Blades. I think it's very main deck wall. <laughs> he loves that Survivor's Encampment. Well, I mean, he already has one of each of the tricks, so I. Yeah. That thing wields, okay. All right, Devastator wield. wield. Hazard's Undying Fury wield. That is awesome for him. Yeah, like the thing is, he already has the six mana four for Angel, and I think if you have both, you only play the Angel in, in red, white aggro. Sure. But yeah, so let's see what he got. Third pick. Wow, third pack. he opened the convergence. That's Whoa. rough. Like that's that. Consent from convergence is one of the cards I really don't want to pass. But he also opens the best common in the set. So yeah. Yeah, Cartouche of Strength, Sandworm Convergence, Deem Worthy, and he's taking the Magma Spray here. Yikes. That's yeah, another I, good example in a pack where you don't want to hate the Convergence. I mean, I really like hating Convergence, but if the guy behind you takes Convergence and your teammate is green, he gets the Katusha Strength. So it's correct to just close your eyes and take the Magma Spray and hope for the best. I mean... Yeah, this is a pack that Yui 
picked the sweltering suns out of. Correct. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess Katush got worse now. But I used to take Katush of Solidarity over Unwavering Initiate for sure. sure. Mike's yeah. actually a little bit low on three drops, and yeah, there's that Emberhorn Minotaur that we know Mike got. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it would have been better for PGO if Yui had the Emberhorn Minotaur and Mike had the Tapper, I think. That would be overall better. Another decent mm -hmm. three drop exert in the Red Crop Spearmaster now. There's that Thresher Lizard we were talking about getting past. An excellent three drop. Sparring mm -hmm. Mummy. He has a lot of exert, so that Sparring Mummy is nice. Forsake the Worldly for that uh, opposing Sandwarp Convergence is also quite good on, on this pick seven here. Cartouche comes around, no problem. Oh, that's pick eight, so he might wheel the other Cartouche still. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he wants to play them, though. I don't know. Sure. All right, last few picks here for Mike. Yeah, I like Mike's deck, I think. Yeah. I'd have to see it in person, but, like, he's got removal, he's got good creatures, he's got some finishes. Yeah, it's just, like, a good deck. Like, I think Mike's deck is above average 14 draft deck. I mean, in general, I like Mike a lot against Yui, but Yui has a sweltering sense, which is really good against Mike. Right, but well, outside of that card, I think Mike's deck is way better. The double red, yeah. The double red for Huey it could be a little bit problematic given he's only running six total red sources, but uh, we'll have to see if those player or if those players uh, do end up playing each other. All right. Well, it looks like we got a quick commercial break before we get to the first round, but uh, Kai and I will be heading out, so we will not see you guys anymore. So thank you guys, and we'll see you later. Looking for a challenge? Magic Online offers monthly limited and constructed events, which lead to the yearly Magic Online Championship. Download Magic Online at mtgo.com and start earning the points you need to enter. Check out Hour of Devastation Booster Draft Leagues on Magic Online. Draft anytime, play anytime. Available now. For more information, visit mtgo.com. Represent your country at the World Magic Cup at national events. This September, you can compete against your country's best players for the title of national champion. You need Planeswalker points to participate, so keep playing in local events to qualify. Learn about qualifying for nationals at magic.wizards.com national. 